game plans, and we're very, very fortunate uh, to come away with victory this evening. Um, I was extremely proud of our, our freshmen uh, class who came in and really responded well in an outstanding and exciting college environment. Um, you know, this is a terrific spot on the calendar for this game. Uh, you know, I think it's it's really grown in momentum the last two years, and I think. Really kind of sets the tone for the college basketball season, and uh, you know, again, I just thought both teams played very, very hard. And, uh, you know, if that's any indication of what we're going to see out of both teams this year, I think it's going to be a one-year battle. But in the overall scheme of things, and obviously you recruited him, how big was Spencer's contribution to this? Well, uh, you know, one of the things that really we were lacking last year was a rebounder. And um, we really wanted to try to identify those needs and address those needs. And I have a guy on my staff named Antonio Reynolds Dean. And uh, he played, I, I helped recruit Antonio when I was an assistant at Rhode Island. And he was, he's one of the all-time great rebounders at 6'5". And so when he asked me what we needed, I said, uh, find somebody that looks just like you, plays just like you. Uh, block shots like you, and uh, you know, we were very, very fortunate to, to convince Reiki to come up to Boston all the way from Alabama. He's got a huge heart, um, and uh, you know, I think he's, he's uh, you know, for a first college team, uh, that was pretty impressive. Well, with the shifting college landscape, which you see all the conference realignments and rivalries going, it seemed like tonight a, a game that we're just we're unfortunately starting to lose some of that because rivalries are kind of going away. It's in the same conference, and these teams in the same conference. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're ever going to see this game go away. I mean, it just means too much to, to uh, both institutions, uh, the fan base, uh, the students. I thought it was a great crowd. Um, so I don't think this is going to go away. And, Admin of Media Day today, this this year that is being hosted. Um, you know, there's talk of maybe some more of the local rivalries really getting started up and, and build some tradition into it. So I, I hope that comes to pass. Having more big guys available last year, you didn't really have that. But with Kari Black fouling out tonight and then Reggie Spencer later, you still had Kashif Edwards, Quincy Ford, and even Ryan Pearson, who didn't have a great game, but right. is available. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the trick is going to be finding the appropriate time to play all those guys. But they're definitely great options, and each one of those guys brings a little something different to the table. Um, you know, some more ball handling, some more perimeter shooting, some rebounding, some quickness. So uh, it, it's a great uh, group of four front court guys, and uh, it gives us a lot of versatility. And as you said, when you get foul trouble, to have that extra big guy is just critical. Coach, you guys were ahead a 11 point lead late yeah. in the second half. Is yeah. something they did differently or you did to do in that stretch? You know, I, I thought, you know, well, BU really stepped up their game, but I thought I thought we relaxed a little bit when we got the double digit lead. Um, I thought our shot selection got a li little quick. Um, we had a couple of critical turnovers. We didn't secure a couple of rebounds. Um, and that's still a young team. We only have one senior. And um, I, I, I cautioned them in the locker room. Whenever you go on the road in college basketball, you just can't give that home team an opportunity to come back. Like if you have a lead, you have to finish the game out, and that's something we're going to need to improve upon. Coach, I would just tell you guys at the start of overtime, but you know, when your team you know, lost a lead like a few minutes before. Yeah, you, you know, we lost the lead, but I still felt pretty good. We were playing pretty well, and um, I thought our defense could step up, and, and it did. You know, and that's what we were priding ourselves on, getting stops and getting rebounds. And we did a nice job on the backboard today, and I, I think for the most part we, we worked very hard on the defensive end. And two areas that we wanted to improve upon uh, based on last year's season. And there have been points of emphasis us last in the, in the early season and, and preseason practices, and guys are starting to buy in. Buy in. Um, but it's, it's tough to keep good players down. Coach, uh, you all were down a, a a few points about halfway through the uh, through the overtime session. What really allowed you all to uh, pull through there and uh, and uh, and uh, and ultimately uh, help you get through the win there tonight? 
Yeah, just uh, I, I, again, I thought we got we got some stops, and uh, you know, we got some got some runouts, and made some big plays. Chief had a, a, a big play in transition. And, uh, you know, John Lee and Joel had terrific games for us. I know Joel Smith. Um, you know, we we've been pushing him to get on the backboard. He did a nice job. How when we big lead came up with huge rebounds late late in the overtime. So when when you get into a game like that. Um, had to find a way to tough it out, and, and I, I, was, I was proud of my guys the way they responded um, to BU's, both of BU's runs. Coach, you said 11 threes in the first half, five the rest of the game. Very emphasis after the first half on getting the ball. The yeah, I thought they played a little more zone in, in the first half, and uh, you know, typically early in the season, you know, teams are going to settle for threes, and I thought we did. Um, we got some uh, decent looks, but not great looks against their zone. And I thought in the first half we were settling. Uh, they went a little bit more man to man in the second half, and we were trying to attack the basket. Um, and we did a nice job of that. They got the ball to Richie around the basket a couple of times, and got the ball inside. Coach, uh, you guys outrate rebounded by about 20 rebounds. Um, you know, how big was it to take advantage of kind of their lack of depth in the front court, especially without Jake O'Brien? And you know, how much does when their power forward Don Morris is sitting on the perimeter shooting threes? That make it even, you know, I want to say easier, but a little bit easier in the in the low blocks for you guys. Yeah, well, I mean, I think one, it, it had been a point of emphasis for us, and you know, um, you know, the backboards are so critical in the game. Second shots, second shot opportunities, easy basket, put back baskets. You know, you have to do the job on the backboard, and you know, like I said, I think Reggie made a huge difference in that regard. But if a guy like Jake O'Brien, you know, he's an all-conference player. He's a guy that's played very, very well against us in the past. It's hard to replace him midstream. Um, so, but uh, Joe Jones is a terrific coach. Uh, they'll figure out a scheme that's going to make them effective, and I think they're going to get better, you know, each and every week going forward. Uh, you know, this is the first time out for everybody, and you don't really know what to expect. Um, but, you know, we tried to execute our game plan and get on the backboard. Card Black fouled out again, and it seemed like that was a problem for him all of last year. But it seemed like tonight it wasn't as much out by the three point line. What was the difference in that? And did you think it might have still been a better game for him? I thought he started the game very, very well. I was excited about the way he started the ball. He's moving the ball. Uh, he had he had that kind of three minute stretch, um, and they had a nice little game plan in, in the post of Don Morris that went right at him and, and got him got a quick foul on him, and then he got another reaching foul. And those are the ones that we've really been talking to Cardi about, and he has to eliminate from his game. We need him available to us at the end of basketball games. We can't have him uh, DQ'd. Um, and he's just got to be a little bit more disciplined uh, on those fouls. Uh, the one on Don Morris, it's, it's tough. It was kind of seal up play, and, and you get caught in the post. And he's, better, he's a better perimeter defender than that one I can understand, but a couple of reaching fouls, he's got to stay away from it if we're going to be as good a basketball team as we want to be. You probably, had, you probably had about six hoops today on weak side with penetration passes. Did that just happen, or was that a point of emphasis? No, we're trying to get in the lane. We run a little ball screen motion offense, and uh, you know we're trying to attack, get into the paint, and, uh, because I think we do have some very good offensive rebounders. And, when you get in there, if a big steps up, you know, you're able to drop the ball off. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense. I think they did the same thing to us. You know, uh, DJ Irvin is, you know, he's, he's tough to keep out of the lane. He's so quick, and when he gets in there, he wreaks havoc. We had a couple of times where we thought we had charges, and, you know, he's just so shifty that you can't really get a good angle on him. Um, so I think dribble penetration is one of the most difficult things to guard in, in, in the college game. I thought we got in the lane, but I thought they did as well. Thanks, Evan.